blood pressure is another important vital sign for a healthcare provider to measure. A blood pressure measurement indicates the amount of pressure in the blood vessels of the body. A high blood pressure could be an indication of serious illnesses such as heart attack, stroke, pregnancy complication, kidney, or eye damage. The blood pressure measurement has two numbers. The first number is the higher of the two. This number shows the pressure in the blood vessels every time the heart beats. This number is also called systolic. The second number is the lower of the two, and this number shows the pressure in the blood vessel at rest in between the heartbeats, and this number is known as diastolic. The two numbers are recorded with a slash in between to separate them. This blood pressure is read 120 over 80. This number is indicated in millimeters of mercury. You will need a stethoscope and a blood pressure cuff in order to measure blood pressure. This is a blood pressure cuff. It has the cuff or the bag part which wraps around the arm. It has a bulb which is used to pump air into the bag. The bulb has a screw valve and you can use this screw valve to let the air in or out of the bag. To increase the amount of air in the blood pressure cuff, close the screw valve and then pump air by using the bulb. You see how the blood pressure cuff rises? To let the air out, open the screw valve. And the air will come out. If you are pumping air with the bulb and the cuff is not inflating, it could be because the screw valve is open or there is another leak in the cuff. This is the pressure gauge which shows the reading for the pressure in the cuff as it is inflated or deflated. It is also called a manometer. The needle points to the number to indicate the pressure in millimeters of mercury. This is a stethoscope. At this end is the part which is used to listen to the patient. This can be used to listen to the sounds the heart makes, to the sounds of breathing, or to the sounds of determining the blood pressure. This end of the stethoscope may have one or two sides. If you're using the stethoscope with two sides, use the bigger sides for taking blood pressure measurements. The earpieces at the other end of the stethoscope are put in your ears so you can hear the sounds. See how the earpieces have an angle onto them. This fits better when they are placed facing forward. Before taking any measurement, wash your hands with clean water and soap. The patient can be sitting or lying down while taking the blood pressure. The arm should be relaxed and supported at the level of the chest. The skin of the upper arm needs to be exposed before taking the blood pressure measurement. Therefore, if it's covered, pull up the sleeve in order to expose it. Make sure this is not too tight as that can alter the blood pressure measurement. If the sleeve is bulky or tight, ask the patient to remove the shirt in order to avoid this problem. Next, select the blood pressure cuff that is a correct size for your patient. Labels on the inside of the cuff will show you which size to select. Patients with large arms will require a bigger cuff. And those with smaller arms or children will need a small cuff. Incorrect blood pressure readings can occur if a wrong sized cuff is used. To measure the blood pressure, first use your fingertips to feel for a pulse of a major blood vessel that is located on this area. This blood vessel is located toward the inside of the arm at the level of the arm crease. This area is where a major blood vessel 
is located. The artery mark on your blood pressure cuff should be placed around this area. Wrap the blood pressure cuff around the patient's arm, making sure the artery mark is placed around the area of a major blood vessel. The cuff should be placed on the upper arm with the bottom edge of the cuff placed about one to two fingers above the arm crease. The cuff should be placed tight enough to allow just two fingers to be put under it. Now use your fingertips to locate the pulse on the wrist. This pulse is located on the indentation on the thumb side of the wrist. Why don't you feel your wrist pulse to see if you can locate it? Inflate the cuff by closing the screw valve and squeezing the valve. Continue feeling the pulse and watch the pressure reading on the gauge. When you stop feeling the pulse, inflate the cuff 30 more millimeters. Now place the earpieces of your stethoscope in your ears. Then use the large part of the stethoscope and place it over the area of the blood vessel at the level of the arm crease as you located previously. Very slowly deflate the cuff by opening the screw valve to reduce the pressure about 2 millimeters per second. As the pressure drops, you will hear beating sounds as the blood begins to pass through the vessel. Remember the number at which the pulsing sounds start. This is the systolic pressure. Continue to slowly lower the pressure until you can no longer hear the sounds in the stethoscope. The number at which the sounds stop is the diastolic pressure. Remember this number. Now open the screw valve and let the air completely out of the cuff. Once you are done taking the blood pressure, record the systolic and diastolic numbers on a paper while you still remember them. At this point, you can remove the blood pressure cuff. If you have any doubts on the measurements you have taken, you can repeat taking the blood pressure. To avoid incorrect reading, make sure your blood pressure cuff is completely deflated before doing so. For an adult, the normal systolic blood pressure is below 120 and above 89 millimeters of mercury, and the normal diastolic blood pressure is below 80 and above 59 millimeters of mercury. Prehypertension is a systolic pressure from 120 to 139 millimeters of mercury or a diastolic pressure of 80 to 89 millimeters of mercury. Patients with prehypertension may later develop hypertension. Stage 1 hypertension is a systolic pressure of 140 to 159 millimeters of mercury or a diastolic pressure of 90 to 99 millimeters of mercury. Stage 2 hypertension is a systolic pressure of 160 millimeters of mercury or greater, or a diastolic pressure of 100 millimeters of mercury or higher than that. Blood pressure may vary from day to day. Therefore, several measurements taken on different days are needed to diagnose hypertension. A patient who has several abnormal measurements on different days should be sent to a healthcare provider for further evaluation. If a patient has a systolic blood pressure of 180 millimeters of mercury or higher, or a diastolic blood pressure of 110 millimeters of mercury or higher, wait several minutes and take the blood pressure again. After repeating, if the reading is still above these levels, a healthcare provider should be contacted immediately for treatment of this particular patient. A high blood pressure at this level is called hypertensive crisis. 
Medical conditions such as stroke, heart attack, pregnancy complications, eye damage, or kidney damage may occur if this person is not treated immediately. Mm -hmm.